Alright guys, here we are on um, Thursday. We're going to learn how to use those proportions and uh, ratios that we learned yesterday from class. And um, we're going on to, uh, we're going to do a warm up right here, just looking at this triangle. Um, we're going to write the ratio of AB to BC, which are the sides of the triangle. So AB is 21 and BC is 42, and I want to reduce that. So 40, uh, 21 and 42, what do they have in common? Well, 21 goes into both of them. It goes into itself once and 42 twice. So the ratio is 1 to 2. Okay, what's the ratio of the three sides from smallest to largest? The smallest side I see is 21. Next I see 42. Finally, 56. Now 21 does not go into all of these, but 7 does. And we need to simplify it by finding a number that goes into all of them. So 7 goes into 21 three times. 42 6 times, and 56 8 times. That would be our simplified ratio. Now we want to write a ratio for all three angles, reduced from smallest to largest. Well, right now, all I see here is the 100 degrees right over here and the 15 degrees here. Triangle sum theory says, how much should they add up to? Well, they should all add up to 180, which makes the side over here 65 degrees. So from smallest to largest, we've got 15. Then we've got 65, Oops, sorry, and then we've got uh, 100. Uh, what number goes into all three of those? I would say 5. So 5 goes into 15 three times. It goes into 65, I believe, 17 times, and it goes into 120 times. And you know it's simplified because all of these three need to have nothing else in common, which they don't. So we're done with that. All right, so today we're going to use uh, do two uh, methods of usefulness of, of these uh, proportions. Um, so I want you to look at the worksheet we gave you last night, and I want you to flip to the back of it, and you will see word problems. Okay, so I'm going to do the first four for you, and you're going to finish off the rest of them for your homework, as well as uh, the right-hand side of that paper. So word problems, um, are all. these are all word problems that have the word ratio in them. And here for number one, it tells us the ratio of the measure of two complementary angles is 45, 4 to 5. Now, there's two things going at work here. Ratios, which we're just learning, and things that we used to know about angles and triangles, etc. So we got to keep that in mind that where I'm getting that knowledge from. Now, what I'm saying is the ratio 4 to 5 has already been reduced. So that meant there could be some other number here, which I'm going to call x, that we were able to cancel out of both of them to get the ratio 4 to 5. So for the sake of this word problem, I'm going to put the x back in. And I'm going to say, all right, the two angles are 4x and 5x, angle A and angle B. Now, all I know about angle A and angle B is that they are complementary. And complementary, if you remember back from before, meant that they add up to 90 degrees. So if I was to write a little situation here, I'd say angle A plus angle B is 90. And now subbing in what we know for each, 40, sorry, not 40, I apologize. Uh, let me undo that. 4x plus 5x is equal to 90 degrees. 4x plus 5x is obviously 9x equals 90. Divide both sides by 9. And that allows us to find that the thing that we crossed out that they had in common was 10. So if they both had 10 in common, let's put it back. And that tells us that angle A must be 40 degrees and angle, five, uh, angle B must be 50 degrees. All right, we're going to use the same idea on the next problem. We've got the ratio of two supplementary angles is 11 to 4, which I'm going to write as 11x to 4x. Okay, supplementary meant that they add up to 180 degrees. So this tells me my 11x plus my 4x equals 180. 15x is 180. If I divide both sides by 15, I get that x, the thing that we canceled out that they had in common, was 12. So let's add that thing back in. 
the, one of the angles is 11 times 12, which is um, 132 degrees. And the other one is 4 times 12, which is 48 degrees. All right, next page. The measures of the angles of a triangle are in the ratio 3 to 4 to 5. Let's put back in the thing that we canceled out, the 3x to 4x to 5x. And we know that the angles of a triangle, what do we know about them? Well, they, once again, add up to 180 degrees. So that tells me that 3x plus 4x plus 5x equal 180. Let's add these all up. 3x and 5x is 8x, and 8x and 4x is 12x plus 100 equals 180. Let me divide by 12, and you should get x is 15. Let's put them back in like we've always done. So 3 times 15 gives me that one angle is 45. 4 times 15 tells me that another angle is 60. And 5 times 15, which you should be able to figure out by subtracting, tells me that the other angle is 75. And these are my angles. All right, next one. The measures of the acute angles of a right triangle are in the ratio 5 to 7. Let's put that x back in, 5x to 7x, that we canceled out already. Now this takes a little bit more thought. If I have a right triangle, which tells me that one of the angles is 90, the other two are the acute angles. And what should they add up to? Well, if all three of them add up to 180, and I already have taken out the 90 for the right angle, that leaves me with 90 degrees left over for my other two acute angles. So that tells me that my 5x plus my 7x add up to that missing 90 degrees. So here we have 12x is equal to 90. 90 divided by 12 will give you 7.5. And this doesn't always have to be a, a nice even number like you're seeing. And now if I go ahead and I plug this back in, 5 times 7.5, tells me that one of the angles was 37.5 and 7 times 7.5 is 52.5. These are degrees because they're angles. All right, so that's it for my examples of word problems. But by now, hopefully you get the idea. We're taking the ratio, we're adding back in the x's, and we're setting up an equation, solving for x and plugging that value back in. All right, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for x. Uh, yesterday we looked at uh, proportions with just numbers, but now we're going to add x's in them. So one of the ways in which I'm sure you, when you look at the proportion, you're going to think to solve it is to cross multiply, just like we did way back when, um, you know, I think you've done that in algebra. You've done that definitely times before. So let's try to solve this by cross multiplication. So if I take my 17, I'm going to multiply it times this number down here. 3x plus 1, and I'm going to take my 34 and I'm going to multiply it by this number, which is 3 plus x. This is not on your sheet, by the way. This is just another problem I'm giving you. Okay, to go ahead and solve this, I'm going to need to distribute 17 times 3, which is 51x, plus 17 times 1, which is 17, equals 34 times 3, which is 102, plus 34 times x is 34x. All right, now it's just a regular algebra problem. I'm going to bring my 34x over here, 34x, and I'm going to bring my 17 over here. And what do I have? I have 51 minus 34, which is 17x. Um, equals 102 minus 17, which is 90. And now if I go ahead and I divide by 17, I get a number that is um, 
5.29. I'm just going to double check that 17 times 3, definitely 51. Uh, 34, 7, and 51 minus 34. 17. And then we have 34 times 3 minus 17. Ah, 34 times 3, I'm sorry. Uh, that's definitely 102, and when I subtract 17, I wrote somehow 85, and that number was, uh, I wrote 90, and the actual number was 85. Let me come back and check this out. I'm sorry, when I subtracted 17 from 102, that's actually 85, and 85 divided by 17 is 5. That's what I thought the answer was. All right, so that number is 5. All right, um, and all we're doing is trying to solve for x, so we're done. That's it. What I would like to say, though, is these numbers got really big. You saw I made a mistake. They're not nice to work with big numbers. But let's try doing something else that we learned yesterday, which was using one of those properties to help us. So I'm going to use the property where I take the 34 and the 3 plus x, and I trade them, called trading the means. If I do that, I get 17 over 34 equals 3 plus x over 3x plus 1. Now sometimes when you trade the means or trade the extremes, you can actually simplify them first. And 17 goes into 34 two times. So this would be 1 and this would be 2. Now let's try and cross multiply and see if those numbers are nicer. 1 times 3x plus 1 is just 3x plus 1. 2 times 3x plus 1 is uh, three, sorry, 3 plus x is 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 2 times x, which is 2x. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to, that gives me x over here. I'm going to subtract my 1, and I get x is 5. In my opinion, simplifying first made that problem a lot easier, and we didn't get to make, I didn't make any mistakes, so that's much better. All right, um, this is another example not on your sheet. Um, I'm not going to do it right now because I just don't uh, have enough time left in the video. Um, but this would be another example of where trading these two numbers first would help you out. All right, let's do one that's in your, on your sheet, which requires a little bit of extra help. That's why I want to do it. This was number four on the right-hand side of yesterday's worksheet on the back. We're going to multiply. We're going to cross multiply. We can't trade here. I, 2 and 8, that won't change anything. A plus 1 and A plus 1, they'll still be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. This is A plus 1 times A plus 1 equals 2 times 8. We actually have to multiply out the A plus 1 and the A plus 1, foiling it, so to speak. And that gives us A squared plus 2A plus 1 equals 2 times 8, which is 16. I'm going to bring the 16 over to this side. So we have a squared plus 2a, um, and this is now minus uh, 15 equals 0. So now when you look at this problem, guys, you've got a term that's being squared, a term that's with a, and a number, another, another number on the end. We need to find two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to, uh, to 2 to, in order to factor this. So those numbers, when I look at negative 15, first numbers I think about are um, 3 and 5. And it's either negative 3 and 5 or 3 and negative 5. These two add to positive 2. These two add to negative 2. So these are my answers right here because, uh, oh, no, actually, sorry. Uh, these are my answers right here because I'm looking for things that add to positive 2. So let's actually factor this. This is a plus 5 times a minus 3 equals 0. This gives me two answers. a either equals the opposite of this term, negative 5, or the opposite of this term, positive 3. Um, and those are my two answers. I need to check them in the actual problem and make sure that they both work. Um, make sure that it doesn't make any denominator zero at all. Um, and, uh, and, and then we're good. All right, so the rest of your homework is to finish the entire back side of the worksheet. And, uh, and you have the rest of class and tonight to do that. Good luck.